My name's Angelo, and welcome to We Want Picks. I'm going to give you my favorite underdog fantasy entry for UFC Vegas 87. If you don't know what underdog fantasy is, it's daily fantasy. You come in here, you say higher or lower than the numbers you see on the screen, and you can 20 times your money. You could even do one of these fancy little chili peppers and then add another 11 times on that. So 20 times 11. You can 222 times, look how fast I did that math. You can 222 times your money. It is absolutely insane. It is super fun, easy most weeks, and they will even give you free money to try. Just go to wewantpicks.com slash underdog. Use promo code WWP and they will instantly match your deposit. If you give them 20 bucks, they'll give you 20 bucks right then and there. If you give them $100, they will give you $100 instantly that you can use. No rollovers, no weird restrictions. You use it, you build an entry, you 222 times your money and you immediately can withdraw all of those winnings. Wewantpicks.com slash underdog, promo code WWP. I... I'm going to focus on UFC Vegas 87. But you can see here with all the different pretty little colors on the left, it is every single sport. College basketball, we got March Madness right around the corner. Hockey is playing right now. Baseball should be kicking up pretty soon. Obviously, we got some spring training, but some real baseball officially will get going soon. All the sports you can mix and match, do all the things. Let's jump in. I mentioned the 11.5x. So when you come into underdog, sometimes you're going to get a chili pepper. It's like the blazing hot. I don't, it should be dog bones, marketing team. It should be dog bones. It's ridiculous that it isn't. Either way, a chili pepper, they have Jarzinho Rosenstruck to win by submission 11 and a half times your money. Obviously, it's highly unlikely, which is why they 11 and a half times the money there. I'm not going to do it because I just, I don't know how that happens. I don't see it happening. It's not going to happen. If you do think he wins by finish, though, which is basically the only way Jarcino Rosenstruck would win this fight, they juice that line as well. You get another 25% boost on top of it. But let me go through what I like here. I do like the more than five minutes for the main event. It's under Shamil here, but more than five minutes. I think their second round starts. While Shamil's got a ton of finishes, while Jarzino Rosenstruck has a ton of finishes, Jarzino can be gun shy. He can sit back. He can wait. And he's got plenty of fights that go long because unless you're just making huge mistakes and charging at him, he's not typically going to land those big punches. He sets them up. He waits. He counters. And Shamil's a good enough fighter. I think he's going to work a lot of cage control here, avoid the chaos, maybe take it to the ground. I think the second round starts, and that's all we need for this line to hit. If we take a look, Tyson Pedro, I don't think he wins this fight, and those are really the only lines they're giving us here. Vitor Petrino, I do think he wins. He probably wins by finish. So if you want to add Vitor Petrino higher than half a finish, I do think that hits. I don't have it in mind. I'll walk you through what I have in mind. Alex Perez, I don't love anything there. I don't think he's going to win this fight at all, let alone by knockout or submission. And if we work our way down, we got Mohamed Makayev. I do have a play with him on Rivals. I'll show you that in a second. Let's look at his takedowns. Three and a half takedowns. And I'll show you in one second what we can do with that. On the other side... Bexat Alhaman, he's the one fighting Namraga Madoff. If we had a significant strike line here, I might touch it. He's a phenomenal striker, lightning fast, but nothing that I see there that I like. But if we do go to the Umar side, I think this fight goes a little bit longer. The round line is one and a half rounds, so I think we cruise past that. This line here is basically saying it pretty much has to go to a decision. Late third round or pretty much a decision. And I think that happens. His opponent... Namagamadov's opponent, Alkhaman, is very, very good. He's not a bum. He's not, uh, you know, he doesn't have the wild name recognition that a lot of people are hoping for or sort of expected when they see a name like Umar Namagamadov. I'm messing with my camera here. The name like Umar Namagamadov, but he is very good, very fast, good takedown defense. And uh, while I don't think Umar is going to lose this fight, I do think he can go long. I don't know why people are convinced that Umar is this wild finisher. Yes, he just finished a 40-year-old. But he's got plenty of wrestle-heavy backpack-type decisions, and that's probably what this is. If we work our way down, we got Stevie Urseg. I like more than nine fight minutes. This is another weird number for me. Steve Urseg's got plenty of submission wins on the regional scene, but it's not like he's come to the UFC and he's just submitting people by looking at him from across the cage. And he's fighting Matt Schnell, who is notoriously insanely tough. He is a very hard guy to get out of there. All we need is most of the second round. 
get through the entire first round, four minutes of the second round, and we're good. And I think we end up in a decision here. So I think we should be cruising with this more or higher than nine fight minutes. And if we work our way down, I don't really love anything on Eric Anders here. Does he win by finish? Potentially, but Jamie Pickett can be tough, can can make a fight a little longer than you would expect it to be. And then if we go to Jamie Pickett, I don't see him winning, let alone by finish. Javid Bazarat, if you want to go the more on significant strikes, they do have a little bit juiced at 80. When we did this at prize picks, they have Javid's number at 76. It's four more strikes. I don't necessarily think that's going to matter because Javid Bajrat has cruised past that number in most of his UFC fights. The only two fights he didn't cruise past that was a submission on the Contender Series, I believe, and then his last fight, which was with no contest. And as far as I'm concerned, that's about it for lines on this side of the house that make sense. If we look at Ludovic Klein, actually, I'm dead wrong. I do like the more than 38 and a half significant strikes. Ludovic Klein's another guy. He's fighting a short notice, AJ Cunningham. But he's another guy that's not destroying people. He's beating them with very clean technique. He's beating them with wrestling that he's incorporated. He's not one punch knocking people out. He's not destroying people. He's a very clean, patient, calculated striker. And I think he gets past this number because he's fighting a durable guy who's just going to eat shots over and over and over. And I think Ludovic Klein gets past this number. He has cruised past this number in most of his fights. And then let's head on over to Rivals. What Rivals does is it takes the guys fighting each other and then you just say, who does more of this? For example, they have Bernardo Sopai taking on Vinicius Oliveira. And they're saying, who's going to land more significant strikes in this matchup? And they're giving Bernardo four and a half to start. I actually think Bernardo's a good pick here. But the pick that I ended up going with is if we go down to Mohamed Makayev, we need Muhammad Makayev to get more takedowns than Alex Perez, which is a guarantee. So they gave Alex three to start. And I think we're good there. I think we are absolutely good there. Worst case, it's a push if he only gets three exactly. But I think we're good there. Muhammad Makayev has taken down almost every one of his opponents almost double digits. Everybody he's fought outside of his UFC debut where he got a submission in a minute, everybody he's fought, he has taken down many, many times. Three is an oddly no number. I think it's because they assume that he's going to get the takedowns and finish this fight early. It was a one and a half round line. I don't know why it was a one and a half round line. Muhammad Makayev's another guy. Yes, he's beating people. He's finishing them, but it is much later in the fight's I think Muhammad Makayev wins this fight, and I think he does so with a whole bunch of wrestling. I think he cruises past the three. Let's go ahead, take a look at the entry I already have built. We've got Umar Namagamadov over 11 and a half fight minutes. Shamil Gazeev over five fight minutes. Steve Urseg over nine fight minutes. Ludovic Klein over 38 and a half significant strikes. And then we did the rivals, Muhammad Makayev, to cover the three takedowns. Guys, this is my entry. Build your own entry. If you like this one, awesome. If you don't like this one, you can build your own. The only thing you need to do is get the free money. Build the free money or get the free money. Build your entry with that free money. Win and then withdraw all of it. We want picks.com slash underdog. Promo code WWP. They will instantly match that deposit. No rollovers, no weird rules. Use the free money and then immediately withdraw once you win. We want picks.com slash underdog. Promo code WWP.